Welcome to my dive into the mother sauces. This is part three. First two we did were bechamel and velouté. You remember them. There we go. Bechamel and velouté. Bechamel was dairy thickened with a white roux. Velouté was a light colored stock, usually poultry, sometimes fish. Also thickened with a light roux. Today's episode, we're going to dive into the dark side. Espanol. Most people think, how again, much like Velute, have I ever had an Espanol sauce? Chances are you have. You go into a fine dining restaurant, get a uh, steak with a red wine demi on it. That originally was made from this. And Espanol. So you probably already had it. Espanol is a essentially a dark colored stock thickened with a brown roux. Now we're gonna put in a, a little bit more flavor into that because we want to make sure that this is uh, very very flavorful. But we'll get into that. But first we need to make our roux, which I've got going here. So one thing we've got to watch out for with a roux. Now mind you, I've got a very shallow pan here. This is going to splatter like crazy. So use a taller pan. I'm doing this so you can actually see what's going on down here. While we're letting that wait, uh, many people, when I've seen the recipes and different variations of this recipe, you see people um, making the roux in with the uh, mirepoix that we're gonna add. There it starts to splatter. You can do that, but I'm not a huge fan of that because I, I find that it, uh, I tend to burn it more. So I would rather have my roux set off to the side and ready to go. And then add that when I need it. And we are gonna cook it a little bit more when we do the mirepoix. And I will let you know what mirepoix is when we get there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let the, the water all cook down of the butter, just like we have in the previous two roux we've made. Okay, it looks like all the water's out of there, or a good deal of it. So we're going to start adding our flour. Again, when you get darker on your roux, don't walk away. You have to go uh, use the little boys or little girls room. Turn it off, take it off the off the heat, and then come see it. You know, do your business, and then come back. Also, you'll notice that I do not measure things. Why? Because I'm looking for consistency. See how that? I stir it, it clumps up, but as soon as I'm done stirring, it starts spreading back out and cooking. That's what I'm looking for. This is gonna go for about six, seven minutes. Come back in a minute and I'll have it done. All right, our roux done. We can start working on the uh, mirepoix. So what we're gonna do is we are going to cook off some vegetables in the pan, and then we are going to throw in our roux, throw in some herbs and some aromatics, and then we are going to add the stock and let it reduce by a quarter. Simple enough. So. Mirepoix, I've got a tomato. That's not your standard mirepoix fodder, but we're gonna be using that. Onion, celery, carrots. Now, pay 
very close attention to how I'm going to disassemble these. There will be a test later. So, you ready? Here we go. Okay, we got our mirror quad going. It doesn't have to be a really fine dice, but if you want to do that for practice and such like that, go right ahead. This is going to be cooking down for so long, all the flavors are going to be extracted from, the, from our veggies. Well, those are going. Let's deal with this tomato. Tomato, most of the recipes I've seen call for uh, a pureed tomato or something like that. So called for tomato paste, you can use that. The problem I have with those is I don't want to open up a 12 ounce can when I only need a couple of tablespoons. So I just got a, you know, a nice medium Roma tomato. Peeled the carrot. Remember, stock making, sauce making, and stuff like that, it's a lot like computer programming. Garbage in, garbage out. So I'm going to throw my tomato in there now. All those other veggies have had time to soften up a bit. We'll start getting a little bit of flavor out of the tomatoes. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna add the roux. Now it's the point where you have to be careful. Because you put all that time and effort into making your roux, this is when you can burn it. We don't wanna burn it. Let's add some uh, more flavor. I've got thyme. Peppercorns, I would say about 30. Got two bay leaf. That works just fine. Another thing, parsley. Again, watch the uh, technique. Very simple. Those have started up, we're getting good on that. I'm gonna add my stock now. Yes, I'm using canned stock or bottled stock. But always remember, use the best quality stock you can. If you can make your own, and after I'm done with the mother sauces, I will make a stock and show you how to make a stock. But use the best you can. I bought some some, some stock from uh, some places that I thought were very reputable, and uh, I tasted distilled water with more flavor. A lot of traditional chefs are going to tell you that you need to your herbs, your spices has to be wrapped up in a uh, in a sachet or a bouquet garni. No, I'm just gonna throw this in here because, well, I'm gonna strain it out later. So why would I, why would I put it all in a bundle, wrap up cheesecloth, wrap it up in cheesecloth, and throw it in there? Yeah, it's a little bit easier to extract, and if I'm doing a soup where I don't want those things in there, I just want the flavor, yeah, I'm gonna use the bouquet garni. But with this, I'm gonna strain all this stuff out. So why bother? So for now, I'm going to let this cook down. We're gonna reduce it by one quarter again. And uh, I'll be back in a few minutes. So that cooked for about 20, 30 minutes. Nice, thick, rich. One thing to think about also when you're doing um, canned stocks or prepackaged stocks, purchased stocks, 
is that you want to make sure that you get the low sodium variety. If you get the full sodium variety, you're going to lead to a lot of heartache because it's going to be way too salty after you've reduced it. So let's strain this out. Again, if you've got one of these, rubber spatula only, or the back of a ladle. My ladle, my ladle is a little awkwardly shaped, so I use a, the spatula. If you don't have one of these, just get your finest mesh strainer you got, and that should get most of it out of there. And then, you know, for home use, it's okay to have a little, it's okay to have a little uh, uh, chunk to it, a little rusticness to it fine. So what can we do with this? Well, I've got some uh, pork tenderloin fillets, about 3 eighths of an inch thick. I'm searing them off in this, uh, in this pan. Got a little bit of butter in it. We'll get a nice sear on those and then we'll build a sauce in this pan. That's the one nice thing about demi-gloss and espanol. They're great for making last second pan sauces. And I love doing it. And to tell you the truth, most of your uh, sauces that you're gonna be having at uh, that Fancy Dan restaurant are gonna be made on the fly. There are gonna be a few that are gonna be bulk made and batch made, but in general, they're gonna make them on the fly, especially pan sauces. And pan sauces are so easy to make. Yeah, I'm gonna pull these out. I got a lot of fat in there. I'm gonna drain that off. So you see those nice crusties on the bottom? That's exactly what you want. Perfect. Let's start off with a little bit of uh, diced onion. This sauce is typically gonna use shallots, but I don't have shallots. So I'm gonna use the onions. So this is perfect for making pan sauces. So what I've got here is I've got some Diced, diced onion. You can use shallots. I didn't have shallots, so I used this. And I've got some uh, dried chopped cherries. I'm gonna let the uh, badura reduce. So it's almost dried up. We call that a sec. So I've got the onions in there. I've got the uh, dried cherries in there. The Madeira, I reduced that a sec. And now I'm gonna throw in, I threw in about two, three ounces of the, uh, of our Espanol. And I'm gonna throw these back, back in there. And let them cook up the temperature. There, perfect. Now you gotta be careful when you do this because you're gonna reduce it even further, which is good and bad. So how will we serve this? Let's just take the tenderloins, lay them out here, and grab the sauce, nice, thick, rich, You can garnish this with some frou-frou herbs or something like that, but you know, not for me. At home, especially. At work, yeah, I'll do that. It's gonna look really nice at work. But for home, that's all I need. The only garnish it needs is a knife and a fork. So that's sauce espanol. We made a derivative sauce called Sauce Madeira. We made a few changes to it, but it'll come out just as good. I think it'll be fine. So remember, high quality stock. If you can't buy it, make it. Most of the ones you can buy are fairly good. 
Remember to get the low sodium. We don't want to reduce it down to a big salt lick. And feel free to use the sauce however you want. I'm Chef Terry. Don't forget, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Smash all those buttons down there. Except the dislike, no dislike. I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, we got two more mother sauces to go. And those are the fun ones.